Have you ever prayed and then experienced an undeniably supernatural response where you go, okay, I know someone up there heard me because that couldn't have been coincidence. Have you ever done that? You ever, you've just prayed for something so specific and the answer blows your mind and there's no one that can tell you that no one was listening because you saw it, you experienced it. And once you experience that, there, there's nothing like it in life. It's an amazing feeling. You understand why that early church devoted themselves to prayer. If you're given a mission that really is impossible, I mean, you're telling this small group of people, Jesus commands a small group of people, I want you to get this message to the ends of the earth. You have to be looking at each other going, how in the world do we do that? I mean, remember, this is 2,000 years ago. And to get this message to the rest of the world, they go, okay, God, you're gonna have to do this for us. And so they devoted themselves to this prayer. And, and when, I, when I look at the way they, they prayed, I, I see it as pretty different from the way I was taught to pray because when I was first taught, people just said, hey, just, just start talking. Just say whatever comes to your mind. And, and so I did. I would just start opening my mouth and talk to God about whatever. And, and there's some truth to that, but I noticed in the Bible, there are also some warnings that we have to be very careful how we approach God. For example, Ecclesiastes 5 says, guard yourselves. It says, guard your steps when you go near to the house of God. And it says, draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they're doing evil. Don't just go and start talking. Come silently, come slowly, be careful. And see, these are the things that no one ever told me. They didn't say, hey, be careful what you say to God. Don't make all these empty promises. And yet you have in Ecclesiastes 5 saying, you better be careful what you say. Otherwise, God will destroy the work of your hands if you make these promises you don't keep. And, and as I studied scripture more and more, I realized very few people taught me how to pray in church. And very few people warned me and they didn't even explain to me that God doesn't always listen. You gotta be careful what you say. In fact, James 4 says a lot of times you'll ask and you don't receive because what you're asking for, you're asking to spend on your own passions. Well, no one warned me about that. I thought you just ask him for anything, say anything. You know, he's like a big genie up there. As I look at the way the disciples prayed back then, and as I look at the way Jesus taught us to pray, I, I, I realize it's a lot different from what I was taught. Prayer to them was, was really different. They asked for things that was different from what I typically asked for. And so the last few years have, has been a process of really just understanding prayer again. I remember growing up in this, uh, this little Chinese church and uh, and they, they, they taught us how to pray the Lord's Prayer in Chinese. And, and my prayer, my, my Chinese isn't real good, but you know, they, they made us memorize this. It was almost like a competition, you know, me and my little Chinese buddies were trying to figure out who can memorize it. So every week we learn a phrase and, and pretty soon I remember we got it. It's like, you know, we would just say this thing and, go, and have no clue what we're saying. I mean, what's a glum? I have no clue. I still don't know. It was just this thing we memorized and we said it and we said the Lord's Prayer and no one knew what we were talking about. And I think I still don't know what those words mean. It, you know, I, I had no clue what I was saying back then, but I, I said it really fast and I, you know, and I, and I beat some of my friends and, and, and is that really what God intended? But, but what's amazing is years later, I learned it in English. I learned the Lord's Prayer in English and it wasn't until a few years ago that I realized, wow, I don't even know what I was saying in English. I never really thought through the phrase, and, and maybe you haven't either. I, I, mean, I mean, think about it. The very first word, when we say, our Father who art in heaven, just that word, our. Did you ever think that you were praying, our Father? And, and how we say, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt. It, it's, it's all about us.
I never thought about prayer as something we were supposed to do together. They, they never taught me that, that it was something about our fellowship and this group, this gathering coming before God and saying, our dad. I was taught to pray this in isolation. In fact, some of my friends tell me that they were told to pray it as, as a punishment for some of the things that they did wrong. Hey, say say a bunch of our fathers. and and. And, and we, we lose the thought of this community, this group of people coming together before their Father in heaven. And here we are on this little planet addressing him, and it says, hallowed be thy name. That word hallowed meant sacred. Like your name is so sacred, God. It's, it's an honor to even speak to you. It's an, even, it's an honor to even address you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Think about these phrases now that we've been saying for years and maybe we didn't mean. I mean, we, we, we used to say, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. We're asking for our daily provision. I don't know that I've ever had to pray this um, because I've lived with so much for so much of my life. But think about that phrase, you're saying, God, give us this day our daily bread. Just give me enough to get me through this day. The truth is, is I think if God just gave us our daily bread, many of us would be angry. Many of us would be like, that's all you're gonna give me? You're just gonna give me enough to sustain me for today? What about tomorrow or, or next year or 10, 20, 30 years from now? I wanna know that I'm set up. And yet Jesus, now just, just pray for your daily provisions. I've prayed, lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Haven't you prayed that at times in your life when you actually still were holding on to some temptation? Maybe you weren't even ready to let go of all of your sin, and yet you're saying it's, it's like your words weren't matching up to your heart. And the one that scares me is, is when we say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We're saying, God, forgive me in the same way as I have forgiven others. That scares me because I know I've prayed that while being angry at other people. I know I've prayed that prayer while I was still unforgiving. And so now when I'm telling God, God, forgive me in the same way as I forgive other people. See, we, we need to be warned about this stuff. We shouldn't be just making these vows to God and saying things we don't understand. I never understood, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I, I didn't get that. I mean, have you ever really thought that through? It was just a few years ago that I thought, wow, what was I asking for? I was saying, thy kingdom come. What we're saying is, God, I want your kingdom. I, I want, it's, it's, it's like the, the, the Great Commission where he says, you go and you teach people to obey everything I commanded. We're saying, God, that's what we want. We want you to rule. We want your reign. We want your kingdom. We want everyone to obey you. You know, it's like in heaven, you know, you've, you're on your throne and, and the angels and everyone's following you. We want that here on earth. See, when you pray, is your desire the same desire as God's? Are you after this kingdom? Are you after this mission? Or are you after your own kingdom? So often when we pray, it sounds more like, my kingdom come, my will be done on this earth. I want what I want. Unlike what Jesus says, where Jesus says, hey, not my will, but yours be done. And, and when Jesus taught us to pray, he says, when you pray, pray in my name. And so what we do is at the end of our prayers, we'll tack on, oh, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. We'll say, God, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Guys, that's not what he meant. He didn't mean tack that on at the end of your selfish prayer. He said, no, when you pray in Jesus' name, it's like I am praying for the things that Jesus wanted, the things that he cared about. It was about his mission. We have to check ourselves and go, am I concerned about the things of God? Because so often when we pray, it's just about ourselves.
I've made a lot of mistakes in prayer. Uh, a lot of times in church, prayer became like a transition thing where, okay, pray there because then we're going to have the band come up while everyone's got their head down. You know, it became like this convenience rather than a bunch of people really coming in the presence of God. The beautiful thing is I, I thank God he's a God of grace and he heard all those prayers I prayed in ignorance and he forgives me. But what I get excited about is what if we did pray the right way? I mean, imagine this. What if you got together with a group of people and you knew that this group of people, they all loved God, they all feared Him, and they really were living for God's kingdom and for His mission. And imagine if you came collectively with people that you've sacrificed with, you've sacrificed for. This is a family and you come united and you all pray together and say, Our Father. You've seen our lives. You know that we care about your kingdom. We want your kingdom here. We want you to change us. We want you to change the people around us. Can you imagine praying with that type of unity? What the Bible says is God is looking for people like that. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 16, verse 9 says, the eyes of the Lord, they're, they're roaming to and fro throughout the earth. He's actually looking for people who are committed to him. Why? Because he wants to strengthen them. I love this. God wants to answer our prayers. It's not like we're asking him to do something he's reluctant to do. He's looking for people. And I keep thinking, and can you imagine God sitting on his throne and seeing you and a group of your friends praying the way he asked you to pray and praying for the things that he cares about? I, I gotta believe that if we did that, he's longing to hear that. He's longing to show off his power. But maybe we haven't seen it. Maybe we haven't seen his power because we haven't been praying for the things that he wanted us to pray for. See, when we pray like that, and we really mean it, I really believe that's when we'll see the supernatural, just like the apostles did. And when we see those types of answers, prayer will no longer be a ritual or a time of transition, a way to end a service or a way to uh, bless a meal, but it'll be a way of life. Isn't there a beauty as you hear that? Of what if? and then to see him answer your prayers, it wouldn't be a chore. It'd be what you would live for.